Hey, fun fans. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Bumpers. I'm here with Team 1741 and their amazing robot, Apollo. 1741 is here at the Indiana State Championship. And what we have here is an amazing robot that can score heavily in autonomous, as well as do other major things. Welcome to Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. I'm here with my friend Gorov. We will be going through a little bit of the mechanical side of Apollo. So go ahead, lead the show. Yeah, so uh, we have First of all, our drivetrain, uh, we have um, L2 Mark IV-I swerve modules. Um, and the interesting thing about these is throughout our competitions, we've kind of changed the wheels that go along with it. So currently we're running uh, these uh, VEX TPU wheels. Um, these allow our drivers to have better grip uh, on the surface. Uh, now moving on uh, to um, our intake. So we have an over the bumper intake that flips out like this and so um, we run this motor that takes in the note and then uh, the note bumps into these bump sensors right here which detects the note and automatically flips back in uh, to into our shooter um, this our shooter uh, has vertically aligned wheels because as we tested it, uh, we realized that um, they were better in terms of velocity than um, horizontally placed wheels. So um, this uh, allows us to score from a lot of places on the field. And another thing that helps with that is our angle changer. So if you see over here, we have a lead screw um, powered by a Neo Vortex that runs through this nut that's connected through this pivot point onto the robot, uh, onto the shooter. So as the motor spins, we can go up and we can go down. So we have a maximum and a minimum angle that allows us to shoot from the subwoofer to all the way back to the wing line. Um, in terms of our climbing mechanism, we have um, the classic climber in a box, but we modified our hook so that um, it was a little bit sleeker so that we could go uh, underneath the chain um, easier and faster and also uh, grip onto the chain. Um, and also, uh, since our center of gravity is a bit wonky with this side of the shooter being a little heavier, um, these protrusions are at the exact length that we need them to be in order to stay on the chain and not fall off the chain. So Jacob, do you mind telling me a little bit more about the autonomous routine and what you guys have decided to do, especially with like the limelight system and the LEDs? So in our in the autonomous period, and really during the entire robot play, the uh, the robot knows exactly where it is um, on the field. With with both an onboard gyroscope and all of the swerve modules, we have a fairly good odometry and the um, the robot pretty much can tell how far it's traveled and and with that no have a position of theoretically where it should be on the field now the uh, the limelights are all there to to ensure that the position is correct and if not correct that pos that position all of these are used in conjunction to and put through numerous filters to give us a pretty good pose estimate, which during our autonomous period, we use that to to like point toward the the uh, the speaker or to drive a path trajectory. And all of all of this is done in a sequential 
um, autonomous framework that we have made where let's say you have a shooter task and a drive task where you're where the autonomous is pretty much just the step-by-step uh, procedures and all of these motors are used in them so hunter do you <laughs> mind uh, diving in a little bit more about the shooting process and then taking process during this autonomous period. Yeah, so uh, as they mentioned, we have those bump switches uh, which detect as soon as we pick up a note. Uh, this will allow us to automatically flip the, in oh, flip the intake over and put it into our stowed position so we can easily get it into the shooter. Uh, similarly, the shooter will auto aim based off the pose estimation that Jacob explained so that we know knowing where the speaker and the amp are and knowing where we currently are we can calculate the distance and the angle that we need to uh, rotate both the drive and the uh, shooter to shoot it into what we're trying to get to. Uh, if either of those systems ever stop working we have uh, manual overrides for our drivers to use and we have LEDs to indicate whether or not we have the note and whether or not we are trying to do what we are telling it to do so we can know if these systems are working properly at all times. Yeah. And lastly, Jed. Yep. So for the, the driving systems of the robot, uh, it's, it's all really easily controlled uh, from the driver's perspective. We have our LEDs that give us a display of what we're currently doing. So when the intake's flipped out and trying to pick up a note, it tur change turns yellow. And then once it detects that it, no has been picked up, it automatically turns green and flips back over into the robot. Uh, and then from there, we have a couple of remotes uh, where we have blue, and that's where our robot is uh, autonomously auto-aiming to the speaker. Uh, and then we have uh, a, like a breathing red where it goes and rotates to the amp where we can loft our shot into in sport in, in the amp. Um, besides that, we have uh, also a, uh, a, a slow on, shoot on the move that is conjoined with our slow mode and our uh, auto aim feature. So this is our default state of our robot. The intake is flipped in and our shooter is just in a, whatever, whatever position it, it was currently in. Uh, so if we go into intake and note, the LEDs turn yellow. Uh, it spins till it detects, the, the bumper switches detect a note close back in and then from there we can select uh, where we want to shoot so for example we can auto aim and the, they power on and aut automatically determine where it's going to shoot uh, power because there's no April tags it automatically goes to its minimum angle and try to shoot from there all right so we also uh, have our amp mode uh, where we I might just turn the wheels up to where it lofts perfectly and it goes up to its position, which is right where it is right now. Uh, we also have our climbers, which is again like the climber in the box, uh, where they go just controlled up and down. And then our, uh, our shooter flips down all the way so it doesn't get in the way of the chain and interacts with our climber anyways. Well, this is it. Thank you for tuning in to 1741 here at the Indiana State Championship. We wish you guys the best of luck moving in this competition as well as moving on in your future competitions. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.